thicker, thinner, wider, and cleaner. Thousands of woodworkers around the country have embraced Woodpecker's slab flattening mill as the best way to surface live edge slabs. Now we've taken it up a notch with increased thickness range, increased width, highly efficient dust collection, and edge joining capability. The Slab Flattening Mill Pro router carriage adjusts up and down, allowing you to work on thicker and thinner slabs by simply raising or lowering the carriage base, rather than wasting time shimming up the slab or the rails. Check out this range. Work from just a fraction of an inch all the way up to an impressive three and three eighths of an inch. So how do you know where to set the height? It's simple. The curtain isn't touching the stock, neither will the router bit. You want the curtain just a little bit compressed. Just support the carriage off the rails, move the pins to the correct slots, lock it down and go. Just like the original, surfacing a slab with the Slab Flattening Mill Pro starts with locating the high point. Lowering your bit just below that point, moving back and forth across the slab and repeating until you have a flat surface. And that's not all. With the new lower positions and the included carriage stops, you can mill an edge on your stock that's square to the face and perfectly straight too. Another feature of the new router carriage is integrated dust collection. When we first launched the slab flattening mill, we noticed there were chips everywhere. But now, twin dust collection ports are built right into the carriage and a tough flexible curtain completely surrounds the cutting area. This is the Dremel Sawmax, another amazingly versatile tool system from Dremel. The Sawmax gives you the ability to make all your common cuts with confidence. Multi-purpose cutting widths easily cut through everyday materials like wood, drywall, plastics, plywood, and more. Just set the depth of your cut and go. With its ergonomic design, you'll have an unparalleled view of the task at hand. Masonry and tile wheels make quick work of tough materials like wall and floor tile, granite, cement board, or pavers. A flush cutting wheel can be used on its own or paired with special guides for making bevel cuts, miter cuts, or cutting two-by-fours, all with the ease of single-handed operation, no matter where you're cutting, which makes it the tool you'll reach for time and time again. Check out the Dremel Sawmax wherever power tools are sold, or visit Dremel.com for a free project DVD. Cut with confidence. Cut with the Dremel Sawmax. This is the Bosch OS50 VC Half Sheet Orbital Finishing Sander. Designed for kitchen installers, remodelers, painters, cabinet makers, woodworking enthusiasts, and more, this sander boasts smooth handling with a smooth finish. A powerful 3.4 amp motor boasts a high removal rate, but this power won't control you thanks to the integrated vibration control. This Bosch exclusive suspension system minimizes vibration for superior handling and maximum comfort. Use the variable speed dial to match the speed and power to the workpiece and task so you get the best performance possible. The Sheetlock Supreme Paper Clamping System includes paper tensions for the perfect paper fit. This sander also accepts stick-on paper. Featuring not one, but two dust collection options, your work area will stay exceptionally clean with the OS50 VC. Attach the translucent microfilter dust canister with integrated paper filter and screw-off cap or the out-of-the-box vacuum hose connection with airflow control. 
It features multiple ergonomic soft grip locations to prevent hand fatigue, and the high-performance soft microcellular backing pad conforms to many contours. Built to last, the rugged die-cast aluminum gear housing eliminates wobble and vibration while extending the life of the tool. Today on the Grizzly Project Lab, I will show you how to make a perfect fitting tenon using the Grizzly H7583 tenoning jig. Start by adding a 3 quarter inch by 9 inch by 2 inch backer board to the back support of the jig. Then cut a 3 quarter inch by 9 inch by 5 inch backer board and attach it to the side support. These backer boards are used as a safety barrier between the jig and the saw blade. Once your stock is the appropriate dimension, draw the cut lines for the tenon. This is done for reference on the initial cut only. The line should allow for the structural shoulder and cosmetic shoulder that's around the tenon cheek. Place your workpiece firmly against the back and supporting backboards. Then use the clamp hand wheel to securely hold it in place. Make sure all the jig lock levers are tightened and slide the jig with the workpiece mounted up to the saw blade. Use the micro adjust knob to move the side support in or out until the edge of the blade aligns with the first mark. Always make sure the blade kerf is on the correct side of the mark and keep your riving knife installed. Raise the saw blade to the correct height to align with your tenon marks. And move the jig away to start the saw. Start at the saw and use both handles to make your first pass all the way through the workpiece. Turn the saw off and wait for the blade to stop. Then remove the workpiece from the clamp. Next, flip the workpiece 180 degrees and reclamp it. Make your next cut to complete the sides of the tenon cheek. Run all your passes needed, then rotate the workpiece again to create the cosmetic cheek cuts. Clamp the workpiece thoroughly and cut both ends to complete the tenon. Well, almost. We still have one final set of cuts to make without the jig. We still need to cut the tenon shoulders. Do this by installing the table saw fence and clamp a stop block to it for reference. It's important to keep the stop block far enough back to avoid possible binding between the blade and the workpiece. Adjust the blade height to the depth of the shoulder cuts done previously. Attach a backer board to your miter gauge to reduce tear out and align the tenon shoulder mark with the blade curve. Again, you only need to align this once with all of your cuts. Check the first cut to ensure the depth is correct and the tenon is the correct length. Then repeat the cut on the remaining three sides. And there you have it, a precision cut tenon for your project. You can find it.
here with another Craig tool tip to help you get the most from your Craig tools. And today we're going to talk about this one, the Craig Jig Mini. It's small, but it's the perfect tool for repairs of a lot of wood furniture around your house. Take, for example, drawers. You know, dresser drawers, cabinet drawers, and like these big drawers from my shop, take a lot of abuse. And the result is often this, a drawer front that's pulled away from the drawer side. Now, depending on how the drawer was put together, repairing it can be a real hassle, but the Craig Jig Mini makes it easy. To make the repair, I'll start by positioning the Craig Jig Mini on the drawer side. Now, where you do that depends on the thickness of the drawer material. This one is made from 3 quarter inch stock, so I'll put the end of the Mini flush with the end of the drawer side. If it was half inch stock like a lot of drawers, I'd just back the Mini up a quarter inch. The instructions tell you how to do it all. But in this case, I'm going to butt it against the end and then just clamp the Craig Jig Mini into place. So the next step is to set the depth collar on the drill bit. And again, it's based on the thickness of the material. Now, because the Mini's small, it doesn't have the built-in depth guides like some of our larger jigs. But it's still an easy process, and the instructions show you. For 3 quarter inch material, you just set the depth collar 3 and a half inches from the shoulder of the bit, not from the tip. Some people make that mistake. All of our measurements are always based on the shoulder of the bit. So with the depth collar at three and a half inches, I'm ready to drill. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and drill until the depth collar contacts the end of the jig. And I'm gonna go ahead and let the drill bit get up to speed before I start drilling. And there, I've got my pocket hole. And now I'm going to drive in one of our Craig screws. For 3 quarter inch stock, I'm using a screw that's one and a quarter inches long. Just press it into place, and then drive it home.